Hello and welcome everyone, I'm Exceptional and I hope you are too. Welcome back to Stardew Valley. We had another strong season last time, finishing off summer, so let's jump straight into fall of year one. So far, I have not been doing an extensive amount of planning in this run, just kind of letting my heart guide me. I am trying to be reasonably intelligent about it though, so at the start of the season I made a plan. I have to apologize too for the darker screenshot on the first of fall here, some egghead didn't remember it until like 8 o'clock. But using the screenshot from summer I was able to determine how many crops we could water with our sprinklers. I figured a really good number to shoot for was 750 cranberries backed up by 484 pumpkins. I head to Pierre's to start buying up all those seeds and oh yeah, cranberry seeds are expensive. At 242 gold a pop, we can only afford 362, so, so much for my 750 plan. The good news though is that unlike our blueberries last season, we don't have to fertilize these to grow faster. We'll be getting 5 cranberry harvests as long as they're watered and in the ground today. The rest of the first day of fall is spent doing chores and setting ourselves up for the rest of the season. Near the end of the day I was checking out some of my crafting recipes and community center requirements and decided to throw a few crab pots into my river. I won't be investing heavily into these, but if you put a piece of bait in, the next day you should have a fresh piece of something in there. We only need one thing from the crab pots to finish off the hat community center bundle, so I don't care if we catch three newspapers. On the morning of day two, after doing my chores, I head to town and we trigger a cutscene. There is a board outside of Pierre's shop where you can do odd jobs for the townsfolk. Right now though, we're unlocking the special orders board just south of Mayor Lewis's house. These extra quests are a little bit more difficult to complete, but definitely are worth the time. You get a choice between two random quests, and there are a few that I have my eyes on. There are a couple of fishing quests from Demetrius that offer up the farm computer, which is a super nifty tool, but there's something else I have my eye on right now. The wizard has a chance of giving a quest for a prismatic jelly that will reward us with the recipe for monster musk. We'll get into why I want that so much if and when I get there. I did sell a few things overnight, making sure that I had a little bit of extra cash to visit Pierre this morning. I wanted to make sure that I had my community center crops covered, and then a large chunk of that money goes towards pumpkins. Just like blueberries and melons last season, it's going to be cranberries as our cash crop and pumpkins for the kegs. Speaking of kegs, we've got all this field space that's inactive right now, so I buy a ton of wheat. It's a really cheap crop that we can actually turn a fair profit on because wheat in kegs equals, hmm, beer. The rest of the day is devoted to planting all of this and getting it watered. On the morning of day three, I spent some time getting supplies ready to sell to Pierre. There's still sprinkler space that we can fill out there, but then I realize that it's Wednesday. Pierre is closed on Wednesdays and I just don't want to support Joja in any way. So instead, I head up to the tree farm in order to expand that. I'm once again making sure to put fertilizer down on the oak trees, but I'm also planting a few mahoganies. We have a hardwood collection quest from Robin right now that I don't think I'm going to be getting done, simply because I don't have access to enough hardwood sources. Then the rest of the day is spent mining in Skull Caverns, where I want to discuss another mechanic. That mechanic is luck. Luck is a stat that affects many different aspects in the game. Everything from the quality of your crops while harvesting to the chance of finding geodes in the mines. It also impacts the probability of finding a ladder, and so sometimes when you're mining on bad luck days, you find yourself pretty much breaking the entire floor. You can check your luck every day in your house using the TV. If you select the fortune teller option, it will tell you what your luck is for the day. The messages I feel are pretty clear on how they describe what your luck is looking like. They range from the spirits are very happy today, they will do their best to shower everyone with good fortune, to the spirits are very displeased today, they will do their best to make your life difficult. There are other shows to watch on the TV like the weather forecast which will tell you what's happening the next day, as well as every Sunday and Wednesday is an episode of the Queen of Sauce. Until you reach year two, Sunday will always have a new recipe for you, whereas Wednesdays are repeat episodes. Knowing and cooking all of these recipes is part of perfection, but we gotta upgrade our house first. I've been selling pretty much everything that I've been producing recently, just trying to get this field filled out. I fill out a few iridium sprinklers with pumpkins and then it's off to do chores. 
On top of always needing wood, a major push that I'm going for in this season is getting level 10 in all of our skills. That's going to unlock another new mechanic in 1.6 called Masteries. Oh, am I excited to check those out. Day five is spent mining in Skull Cavern, and then on day six, we already have some crops to harvest. It's another great thing about wheat is that it only takes four days to grow, so it's a great filler crop. It's also awesome because different items have different time requirements when they're being processed by the kegs. Our melons right now in the kegs are taking six and a quarter days to produce wine. Putting wheat in will yield beer in only one day. So in an effort to try and keep as many of my kegs synced up at the same time, I'm simply waiting for my melon wine to finish by filling the kegs with beer. This month is all about production. I spend the rest of the day mining for more keg materials. I'm actually back in the normal mines, not heading out to Skull Cavern because floor 30 to 40 in these mines is actually pretty dense with copper. I always used to avoid these floors because of how dark they are, but with a glow ring on, it's not too bad. On the morning of day seven, I have another little trick for you. With my tree farm up at the train station, it's a little bit of a jaunt anytime I wanna see if it's ready or not. So what I've done is allowed the bus stop and train stop tappers to sync up. Now, anytime I see my tappers at the bus stop are ready, that means that my tree farm is ready to harvest. I've continued selling artisan goods and buying up as many pumpkin seeds as I can, refilling that wheat field with pumpkins. This is gonna be the plan with pumpkins until day 15, which is the last day that you can plant pumpkins without applying speed grow. Because they take 13 days to grow, see? I continue working on the fields all the way till the end of the day, filling out as many of these iridium sprinklers as I could with more wheat. As we wait for the next batch of wine, all of this beer is really supplementing our income. Then on the morning of day eight, we have our first crop of cranberries ready to harvest. Oh yeah, they cost a lot to plant, but they are gonna make us a good chunk of change this season. I take all of this and the other artisan goods that I have right now off to Pierre to sell directly to him. I net just over 80k gold on the first harvest. My next stop is Robin's where I made sure to bring stone, but with this amount of money, I have no problems buying a ton of wood. Wood is quite cheap right now at only 10 gold a piece, but at the start of year two, that's going to increase permanently. The real reason I was here though was to upgrade our barn, but because I bought too much wood, we now don't have enough money. Good math, buddy. So it's back to the farm where I build and fill more kegs and set up a few more sprinklers worth of crops. I couldn't afford a coop, but I could afford more pumpkin seeds. The rest of the day is spent doing chores and I make sure to come back and check the community board again. This board will have a new time sensitive quest every Monday, assuming you don't already have one active. Between these two, Pierre's makes the most sense because we're already growing a bunch of these crops. We will not need that 21 day time limit. Days nine and 10 don't really hold much excitement. I do my chores and again spend all of day nine in the mines targeting resources for kegs. Those resources are copper, iron, wood, and oak resin, by the way. Then to mix things up, I spend the entirety of day 10 foraging and chopping trees. Our last two skills, foraging and combat, are slowly making their way to level 10 and 12 experience for every tree chopped is okay. I feel like I've proven that the wood is infinitely valuable. Oh, but did I forget to mention? Yes, I bought more pumpkin seeds from Pierre's, but I also spent 10,000 gold upgrading our house. On the morning of day 11, things are looking a little different around here. And sorry to everybody who wants aesthetics right now, it's just not time yet. The bed and the TV go right next to the entrance again, but check it out, we have a kitchen. We're now able to reliably cook a few of those recipes that we've been learning. Then more wheat gets scythed up while more pumpkins get planted down. Then I swing down to Marnie's to pick up another friend for our farm. I'm only grabbing one duck, but welcome Reg to the farm. On a personal note, gosh man, I really gotta call Reg. I missed his call in like, September. More exciting news, apparently wheat counts as a vegetable, so we have everything we need for Pierre's quest already. I take my 25 gold quality wheat and stick them into the bin in his store, completing the quest. For this we received a prize ticket, which is another new mechanic to 1.6. Prize tickets can be exchanged for, you guessed it, prizes at the prize machine located in Lewis's house. As you buy them, it cycles down the list of prizes and looking at it, wowza. I'm not sure if I'm going to invest in this right now, but there's some pretty sweet prizes there. And the keg resource grind continues. On the morning of day 13, we have our second cranberry harvest. 
Looking back at the footage, I definitely had a missed opportunity here, but we'll get back to that on the next cranberry harvest. I have a kitchen now. I should use it. Heading into town to fund our next set of upgrades, we walk into a cutstein in Pierre's store. He's offering Gus this super amazing bunch of vegetables for 25,000 gold? What? That's outrageous? 10,000 maybe? No, Pierre, that's like still extortionate. This is one of the cutscenes where we as a character get to chime in, and I'm gonna tell Pierre to stop being so greedy. He pouts and is all disheveled because nobody wants to buy vegetables at a 10 times markup because he put an organic sticker on it. Why am I rooting for this man above Joja again? But he reminds me why at the end of the cutscene, taking a moment to reflect and realizing that if he makes his customers upset, he has no customers. Pierre at least is capable of growth, not like Morris. Gosh, that guy is so greasy, my eyes can't help but slide off of him. It's time to start upgrading our tools a little bit more, bringing our watering can to Clint, upgrading it to gold. Then it's up to Robbins to buy a little bit less wood than last time and finally get that barn upgrading. Then it's more mining leading to the end of day 13 where we have even more excitement. First off, my lone goat got pregnant and has now had a baby. I name it huh? and move on. More exciting though is that we leveled up to 10 in foraging getting another skill perk. Botanist is gonna make every piece of forage that we collect from now on iridium quality. I feel it's by far the best foraging skill, but I've spent so much money on wood so far, I'm kind of regretting not going with the wood cutting path. Don't worry if you pick the wrong one though, the perk choices are not set in stone and you can pay gold to reset them. On the morning of day 14, I'm greeted by a beautiful sight, 63 melon wines ready to go. I then visit the traveling merchant like I do every Friday and Sunday looking for some items. I kinda goofed in spring and summer and didn't end up catching a sunfish. If I can't find a sunfish from the traveling merchant here, we aren't getting the community center done this year. I do find a pomegranate which is helpful, but no dice on the sunfish. On the morning of day 15, I received a piece of mail reminding me about the Stardew Fair which I will want to be participating in. There's a display component of the fair where you can show off various items that you produce on your farm. Different items are worth different point values and you can get bonuses for including items from different categories. I won't get into this too deeply right now because the fair is actually tomorrow. I swear, I do something like this, similar to how I got everything ready to sell to Pierre before multiple times this season. I do my chores and head to the town for the festival, and it's tomorrow. Back on the farm, I don't want to sort all of this out again, so I just make its own little chest. I spend the rest of the day in Skull Cavern, but it's less for mining materials this time and more for combat experience. The monsters out here are the toughest and therefore yield the highest experience. Combat is the last skill that we have to max. On day 16, it's time to actually attend the fair. That exists today. Our first steps in and Pierre has a little shop where he's selling a few fun things. One of which is a full on star drop. You need star tokens to buy it and you get star tokens by playing the games around the fair. There's the strongman hit the thing with the hammer style game where if you max it out on the first try, definitely without any editing, tee hee hee, you'll get one whole star token. Then I take a quick moment to set up my display. I wouldn't call it min maxed by any means, but it should definitely be enough to win today. I feel there are three main ways to generate star tokens here. If your display wins the competition, you're granted a thousand star tokens, but that only happens once. I feel that the best way, as long as you're decent at the fishing game, is to talk to this guy, go into his tent, and play the fishing game. You're given a time limit to catch as many fish as you can, all worth different scores. You also get bonuses based on how many perfect catches you manage, and that gives you a chunk of star tokens at the end. It used to be the case that the wheel in the center of town had a 75% chance to land on green. After playing with it a couple of times and then going back and fishing and then playing with it a few more times, I'm gonna say that's not the case anymore. That or my poison luck followed me from Pokemon. I eventually just give up fishing for the tokens that I need and then talk to Lewis to start the Grange display. My display totally rocked at 105 points winning the competition. We get our 1000 star tokens and it's very important to remember that you can take the stuff back out of your display. I have my crimson fish in there and if you leave it, it's gone. I then visit the shop buying my star drop and spend the rest of my coins on the things that I find essential. Darn tootin', a rare crow and a fancy new hat. Rare crows have the same effect as regular scarecrows, they're just aesthetically a little bit more fun. 
And on the morning of day 17, it feels like we're very much getting into the maintenance part of this season. More pumpkins are ready, and since we're past day 15, I'm filling everything back in with wheat. I couldn't do it yesterday because the fair was going on, but I want to donate some items to the community center. I have been making the odd trip here donating things, but this is one of those exciting times. I can finally finish off the pantry, unlocking the greenhouse, and I forgot my pumpkin. Raskin' around, run around, run away, run around, and I'll run all the way back, you know. Okay, back in the community center with the pumpkin this time, we finish off this room. To me, it has always felt like such a milestone to unlock the greenhouse. As long as we've got seeds, we can grow anything, anytime now. I spend the rest of the day targeting combat experience, and here are the results. That is the drawback to being out in Skull Cavern, is that things do hurt a lot out there. We lose a warp totem, fine, a heater, that's okay, and a bait and bobber book, which gives us fishing experience. That could have been so much worse, so let's just take it. Overnight, the Junimos repair the greenhouse while we make some serious bank. 40 gold blackberry, oh yeah! On the morning of day 18, we have another cranberry harvest ready, where I'm going to be taking advantage of our kitchen. I did make sure to hold on to a few different types of crops from every season as I was farming them. This allows me to grab a parsnip from the chest, and I will no longer, for a little while anyway, be selling our animal products. Instead, I'm going to be sticking them in the fridge here so that we can start cooking. Egg plus milk equals omelet, and then omelet plus parsnip equals farmer's lunch. You'll notice that on the tooltip, the farmer's lunch shows that it gives plus three to farming. Having a higher skill level, and of course, a higher luck level for the day, has a chance to increase the quality of the crops that you harvest. I feel like it benefits you even more earlier on because harvesting crops of a higher quality also grants more experience. Yes, we are max level farming right now, but once that combat skill levels up... I then check the community board for another quest, and Demetrius is offering us the one that's gonna give us the farm computer. I don't think we have the materials to build one yet, but it's so nice to know that it's gonna be available. He wants us to fish 20 fish from the ocean, which is actually perfect because I need to do a little bit of fishing for the community center down there anyway. Before dedicating myself to fishing for the rest of the day though, I pop up to Robbins to continue upgrading our buildings. It's time for that deluxe coop, which means that we will now have a max level coop and barn. I then spend the rest of the day fishing. On the morning of day 19, I'm realizing a critical error. My deluxe barn was ready a couple of days ago, and our pig here is gonna take 10 days to grow up. Spider pig, spider pig, does whatever a spider pig can. I really needed this pig to produce a truffle before the winter season, but once again, it's not gonna be the case. I guess I'm now looking for a sunfish and a truffle from that traveling merchant. All right though, yesterday I got totally distracted by the fact that it's raining, so let's set up our greenhouse. Usually I would have found an ancient fruit seed by now, but I haven't in this run, so I think that this is just gonna be a hodgepodge in here for a while. First and foremost of which, of course, is getting all of our coffee back growing. I also make sure to plant a red cabbage seed, which is a spring crop that usually isn't available until year two. I've actually found two red cabbage seeds, and our greenhouse has other things to say about spring. And it's looking beautiful. I have the materials for the sprinklers cooking up at the mines as we speak. Because I've been investing so heavily in upgrades this season, I haven't been spending a lot of money on energy. As such, I didn't feel like going out to Skull Cavern again, deciding to farm the lower floors of the mine back in Stardew. On the morning of day 20, we have another huge pumpkin harvest ready that I'm again just going to be filling back in with wheat. I suppose this is as good a time as any to start actually talking about the farming mechanics in this farming game. The farming skill is associated with planting, growing, and harvesting crops on the farm, and also the care of your animals. As you level up, you're able to learn more recipes and diversify your income streams. As you've been able to tell so far, I'm very much interested in setting up our artisan goods, but we had to get there first, and that's why I've been using my cash crops of strawberries, blueberries, and cranberries all year. Once your seeds are planted, they are at risk of being damaged by environmental factors. 
crows will come and eat your plants, and so, no surprise here, this is why we have scarecrows. They can also be damaged during thunderstorms, which is why I have all of these lightning rods spread out around the farm. The lightning rods during storms will divert lightning strikes to them and generate a battery pack, which are used in making iridium sprinklers. Yeah, there's a bit of depth to what I've been doing without explaining it, but gosh, there's so much to talk about. You do need to keep your crops watered every day, which at the start of the game is very much a tedious and manual process, probably chewing up most of your energy every day. As you level up, you learn how to craft basic sprinklers, which water the four tiles adjacent to them. You may have noticed back in spring, but I totally skipped them. You can then learn how to make quality sprinklers, which water the eight tiles adjacent to them, and iridium qualities, which water 24 tiles around them. There are even further upgrades for the iridium sprinklers, but we'll have to get back to them once we unlock it. Pretty much the farming mechanics are plant, water, harvest, profit? More excitement on day 20 is that while down in Skull Cavern, doing our thing, I see that glorious message pop up. I've got some new ideas to sleep on. That means that our combat just leveled up to 10, so I am out of here. In this instance, all that was required was leveling up to 10. We don't need to pick the perk overnight to go access the Mastery Cave. Back in the valley, just south of Leah's house in Cindersab Forest, we see this little hole-in-the-wall type of place. Now that we've maxed our skills, we can get in here, and there's another note from Grandpa. It says that if we're reading it, we found the secret room that he prepared for us. This is where some of his most cherished tips, recipes, and tools exist. Now, all experience that we gain, be it mining, foraging, farming, any of it, will go towards this experience bar. Once we level up our mastery, we're able to choose one of five disciplines, eventually being able to unlock all of them. The mastery points required start at 10,000 for level 1 and go all the way up to 100,000 for level 5. For reference, increasing a skill to level 10 requires 15,000 experience. But alright, we have new things to work towards. I'll discuss these perks more in detail as they become relevant. On day 21, our bus tappers are ready, so it's time to head off to the tree farm. When I mentioned earlier about syncing up my tappers and kegs, what I meant was simply letting them sit there ready to be harvested until everything was ready to be harvested. That means when I take the time to come up here, I only have to do it once for a full harvest. I'd say that we about doubled our tapper capacity this season, which isn't bad. I push things super late using a farm totem that I found to get back to the farm past 1am. And all of our kegs have wine ready in them, oh no! Don't get me wrong, that's awesome, but I just don't think I have time to cycle them tonight. Which I don't. Overnight on day 21, there's a windstorm which unlocks another, another new thing in 1.6. We'll, uh, we'll check that out tomorrow. Oh, good morning, yeah, that's right, editing happens very quickly. I am more than happy to start my day getting a load of wine out of the kegs and putting in our first batch of pumpkins. I have to apologize if this footage is a touch too fast, but there's just something satisfying about this. I then expand our kegs and fill them up with even more pumpkins before heading south. That windstorm last night unlocked the giant stump right next to Marnie's farm. It seems like it's asking us for 100 hardwoods, so I might hold off on this. I'll have to do a quick bit of reading between seasons to see if this is worth pursuing right now. Despite feeling real good about the number of kegs on our farm, we don't have anywhere near enough yet, so it's more mining and more combat. It's Monday once again, so my last task of the day is to head down to the community board to try and get a new quest. No way, I got the quest that I wanted from the wizard. We have to hunt down a rare prismatic jelly in the mines, but this quest is going to reward us with the recipe for monster musk. Ooh, I want me some of that. I guess I know what my next task is. On the morning of day 23, we have another cranberry harvest ready, so I nom down on my farmer's lunch. Or brunch, I guess, this early in the morning, but within a couple of crops, we've reached a new level of understanding. This indicates that we reached our first level of mastery, and again, with the power of hindsight, I definitely should have gone and checked this out right now, instead of finishing the harvest. Heading down to the mastery cave, I did have to do a little bit of thinking as to which path is going to give us the most benefit. Like I said before, we will unlock all of them eventually, but for now, I feel that farming is the best one to unlock right now. The farming mastery comes with a perk that allows us to find golden animal crackers. 
feeding one of these crackers to our animals doubles the amount of produce that that animal will create forever. Given that I want an egg empire, I'm feeling like I want a lot of these. The only animal that this does not apply to are pigs. It also gives us the Statue of Blessings recipe, which will give us one of seven random blessings every day. But honestly, I'm most excited about the Iridium Scythe. I'll show off the power of that bad boy real soon. This day initially anyway is very much a chore day as I head over to Clint's to grab my new tool. I haven't been mentioning it a lot, but I have been slowly increasing the tier of all of our tools. With the exception of the trash can, everything is upgraded to gold tier or higher. I crafted these mushroom logs a little while ago that again are new to 1.6. They're gonna grow us mushrooms every so often, and they've just been sitting in a box for the last, like, month, so I'm gonna stick them up at the tree farm here. At the end of the day, I have a couple minutes to burn, so I'm just clearing out a bit of space south of the farm. This giant accumulation of rock and wood is getting a little annoying to walk around. On the morning of day 24, I decided that I had too much money and wanted to spend a bunch. I'm down at Marnie's where I plan on filling up the rest of our coop with rabbits. Rabbits, you say? That's an interesting one. You may not have noticed, but I am incredibly lazy with social objectives. I have been making an effort to chat with the villagers, give an occasional gift, just to accumulate a few friendship points, but I'm very much not interested in doing it yet. Once these rabbits grow up, they have a chance of producing rabbit's feet every day. Rabbit's feet are a universally loved gift in the town, except for, I think, Penny? We'll cover these mechanics more in depth later, but for now, just know that these rabbits are serving only to make the townsfolk like me. Then it's back to the mines trying to get materials and hunt for that prismatic jelly. The next morning, as I'm tending to my animals, the message pops up a second time. We have reached our second mastery level. I head down to the mastery cave, and it's time to make a decision that I feel is quite a bit more difficult than the first one. I was really scratching my head between combat, foraging, and mining. After some head scratching, I decided to choose mining as our second mastery. This gives us a perk so that gem bearing rocks will now give us twice the gems. For example, if we find a diamond node and harvest it, it will always drop two diamonds minimum now. It also gives us the heavy furnace recipe, which is more efficient than a regular furnace. But what swayed my choice is the recipe for the statue of the Dwarf King. Every day, it will give you a choice between two of five random mining-related powers every day. Since it looks like we won't be completing our community center before winter, I'm definitely going to be investing more time in the mines. On the morning of day 26, our first batch of pumpkin juice is ready. Oh yeah. Then it's just mine, mine, mine. Still hunting for that prismatic jelly. Another building that I've commissioned from Robin recently is the stable. This is a big reason why I didn't want to spend 100 hardwood at the stump south of the farm, because this stable also costs 100. Now we have a pony, who I have to name. I name my horse Caitlin, because I enjoy riding Caitlin. No, man, inappropriate. Um, horse names. Ed. Sure. Then later in the day, I'm down in the Skull Cavern Mines and I finally find that prismatic jelly. It's a supercharged jelly, but it really doesn't matter because I just kind of pin him in the corner with my sword and win. Sweet! I continue mining and then I get a message indicating that the Spirit's Eve Festival has just begun in the town square. Ah, oh, I'm feeling good about today. How about we go check out the fair? As you can imagine, at the end of fall, it's a very All Hallows Eve themed event. And the most notable thing is this little hedge maze that they put up in town. I make my way through the maze, talking with the villagers along the way, just for that little bit of extra friendship until I reach the chest at the end. For solving the maze, we get a golden pumpkin, and this thing used to be worth 30k, so I saved it for the end of the season, but it's not worth 30k anymore. There was also another rare crow at the shop, so I made sure to pick that up, and, um, let's put the Wicked Witch of the West here, sure. And here we are on the morning of day 28, the last day of fall. We have our final cranberry harvest and let me show off the power of this Iridium Scythe. Honestly, the scythe has never really felt truly useful because most of the function that it served could be copied with the sword. That is until the Iridium Scythe, which is now able to harvest all crops in its radius. 
Oh wow, we are carving through this harvest. This is so nice. It works on everything, including forage. So those clusters of spring onions during the spring season, we can get them in a single swipe. I run down to the wizard's tower, turning in that prismatic jelly and finishing the quest. That's another 5,000 gold and tomorrow morning, the wizard should mail us the recipe for monster musk. Then it's just a series of chores preparing us for the next season. Starting with the tree farm, where you can see that we also have some mushrooms ready for us. Useful? I don't know, but we might need them. Then it's down to Clint's to process geode and these mystery boxes. It occurs to me I haven't really shown what these mystery boxes give, and it's pretty much just useful stuff. Mixed seeds, assorted resources, but you can also get a couple of these books. I get one book that increases the chance of finding more mystery boxes, and I get a book for farming experience. Very cool. I've been feeling a little short on storage, and instead of just blasting out more chests, I got the big chest upgrade from Robin. Big chests are another update in 1.6, and you can simply place them over top of existing chests. This preserves the contents of the chest while doubling the size and returning the smaller chest to you. And that's all I got for fall of year one. I kept that batch of pumpkin juice around so that we could sell everything on the final night of the month. We earn 215,509 gold for the day. Uh, it would have been nice if that pumpkin was still worth 30k, but eh, I'll take the 2750. Let's take a quick look at our money and skills. Our total earnings are now just shy of 1.2 million, holding 270,000 gold in our hands right now. Our skills are maxed across the board, and we managed to get two levels of mastery already. We're also missing only a duck feather, sunfish, and truffle for the community center. Taking a look at our collections, it's obvious that we've done a lot of work, but have a lot to go still. I think our most filled in section is minerals, and there's still like 10 missing. But you know what? For fall of year one, I feel pretty good about this. I want to extend a special thank you to those of you generous enough to support the channel through YouTube membership, Patreon, and Super Chat. Your support makes these videos possible so I can continue to put all of my effort into producing this content for everyone out there to enjoy. From the bottom of my shell, thank you so much. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. Watching until the end of the video, your engagement and subscriptions all help my channel so much. If you feel like I've earned it, consider leaving a like and comment about the run, what you'd like to see in the future, or just to say hi. Hi there! If you want to keep up with my future releases, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications to never miss a video. With the ground now frozen going into winter, we have a different kind of season coming up. I can't wait to show you what I get up to, so until next time, take care everyone. Mm.